Hi everyone and welcome back to Deansby Town. In this short video I'll go through the method I used to create the roof tiles on my recent scratch builds using a combination of Inkscape, thin card, a Cricut die cutting machine and some acrylic paints. If you're making roof slates or tiles to scale, this is a very helpful website here and gave, gives the dimensions of a wide range of slates commonly used in the UK. For this video, I'm going to make a batch of wide countesses, which are 18 inches by 10 inches. I've used a simple spreadsheet to calculate the scale size of each slate. In this case, I'm working with three millimeters to the foot scale so I've divided the inches of each slate by 12 to get the size in feet and then multiplied by 3 which gives a scale size of 4.5 by 2.5 mil for each tile. This can be easily adjusted whatever scale you're working in. So moving over to Inkscape, to start with I create a rectangle 4.5 millimeters high and however wide is needed for the building to form the basis of the slate strip. I then draw a rectangle 0.2mm wide, 4mm high. This will be the horizontal gap between each slate and that will later be cut out of the strip. Another rectangle is used as a guide to position the gap marker at the edge of the tile strip. Using the snap tool helps to line all this up. I position each of the gap rectangles so I'm left with 1.5 millimeters of tile above the cut line to keep this formed as a strip. The gap then is duplicated and using the arrange tool the pattern is repeated along the strip with a spacing of 2.5 millimeters. Getting this to work properly took a few attempts working out how Inkscape works so once I had the pattern I just simply carried on manually using the duplicate tool. Eventually, I ended up with something looking like this. I adjusted the ends to make a series of half, whole, or slate and a half tiles, or slates, at the end to suit the edges of the roof and to give some flexibility when applying this to the model. I also made a full row of slate and a half for spares in case I need to fit around anything such as a chimney. Once I was happy with my slate strips, I selected all of the gaps and chose path union to make these into a single item and then I can use path difference to remove all of the gaps from the slates. This forms the template which will be cut out later. A similar process is used to create a set of ridge tiles with a much wider spacing. Unfortunately what I got wrong here is I didn't allow enough depth for this to be folded over the roof of my model so I had to make this again later on. But if you are doing this please bear this in mind. I then duplicated each type of strip several times to give the quantity required plus a few spares. These were saved as an SVG file to open up into the Cricut Design Space software. There are loads of Cricut tutorials on YouTube and I'm certainly no expert so I'll just quickly run through the basics. If you have any questions on this technique or these methods please do let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So the files were uploaded into the Design Space software and added to the canvas. For some reason I've noticed some of the files change size so it's always worth checking these out and matching the original on your Inkscape or whatever software you're using drawing. I then set this up to cut out on thin card using the fine point blade which I found works very well. The card was placed on the light grip mat and pressed down, loaded into the machine. Once the machine's up and running it clearly makes my desk wobble lots so I won't be filming from here again. And then the machine just gets on with the cutting and you end up with something like this. The advantage here is you can carry on with whatever you'd like to do while the machine's working its way through the cut. From here it looks like a bit of a mess 
but once the strips are removed, they are cut really neatly. And I have found they're much neater on the reverse side and the software does allow you to reverse the image. So moving back to the model and the application of the slates, the slates are simply then glued onto the roof using PVA glue. I have found that using plenty of glue is best to get the slates to stick well and I haven't had a problem with overpainting this. I then offset each of the rows by half a tile to create the slate effect here. Once I've reached the top, the ridge tiles can be added over and folded over the back of the model. Moving on to painting now, I use a mixture of acrylic black, grey, blue, light grey and white acrylic paints. I tend to mix these fairly roughly as I go, sometimes in the palette, sometimes on the roof itself, and mix the highlights on the roof with the base still wet, dragging them down to create the streaking weathered effects. I do like this method as you can make each roof unique from the size and style of the slates used to the colours and the effects created. I think it works really well with the brick papers and brings the building to life. And here is the end result. Well if you found this video helpful please do give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more like this please consider subscribing to the channel. That's all for this video, so until next time, bye for now.